Hello guys, um, welcome to another Windsor Academy guide. My name is James. Together with my wife Solemnus, we lead the Bad Omen community here on EURO. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, this will be the Horror Toy Factory guide. I, lo I know a lot of people have been requesting it and been waiting for it, and I'm sorry for not being able to get around to doing it. We had some technical problems, and anyways, we're back here now, yeah? So, uh, I'll be doing this with my GX, which is 173, Caroline, which is rolling cutter spec. Now, Horror Toy Factory is a level 140 instance, but honestly, if you're going in solo, I would highly recommend at least 160, unless you got some sort of magical godlike Chuck Norris gear going on. Um, having said that, let's just jump right into it. Um, Gear-wise, well, obviously I'm fairly overgeared, but there are a few things that I would like to point out that are quite essential. Now, the first one would be a deadly armor, right, with an evil druid card. Enchant doesn't really matter, I mean, you can enchant it with whatever you like, but you will need it for the final boss, Kimmy. The second thing I would say is essential is the Sephir armor. Now, you might be wondering why. Uh, because in the last phase before the last boss, you have to chase down Antonio, and Antonio is in a room packed with mobs that spams thunderstorms. Alright. So, Sephir armor is great. Don't make the mistake I did, I was using my deadly armor and a deviant bag and I basically got one shot. It sucks. Um, so that's it on the defensive front, aside from, honestly, you kind of want a deviling card for this in a braver bag. You could make do with a raid rig, but it's gonna be expensive and it's gonna be painful. Outside of that, um, there are a few things that I actually, I didn't even know that I was taught when I was doing this live on stream. And that is that Venom Impression plus um, Enchant Poison is actually very effective against Kimmy. The thing is, Kimmy is a ghost slash undead and a large mob. Hang on, let me just get the exact wording here. Yeah, so she is a ghost one large size property undead. Now, this might seem confusing. It basically means you need some sort of element because she only takes 70% from neutral damage. So, having said that, I, I would, I mean, if you're able to get your hands on Ghost Element, that would be the absolutely best, but honestly, I'm not really sure who would be, I mean, there are some weapons that give you Ghost property, I suppose, but anyway, so, as a GX, Enchant Poison plus Venom Impression actually gives you quite the boost. Now, getting to the last boss isn't really hard. Um, first, let's see, while we're talking, I'm just gonna get there. As always, we start off in Yuno, because that's kind of like, you know, my main point. So, just use the Kafra and then teleport all the Boran. So, while we're walking, I just wanna... Obviously, she's a boss, so a Liberation Qatar is definitely recommended. Unless, I mean, you can roll Malicious as well. There is actually one more thing, which is... I run Speed of Light and Shaunted Boots. Now, I've been actually getting a lot of criticism for this because, oh, they don't do damage. No. But dead people don't fucking do any damage either, do they? I'm sorry for cursing, but um, let's just hope we don't run into Hati here. So, you see, this is the Hati map. So, we're basically, the instance is located in Luti. Luti? Luti? Uh, either way. Um, Otherwise, I mean, Rogue's Treasures are great if you're doing it on a GX, they're cheap, they're effective. You actually need a ton of hit. To hit her 100%, you need 559. I'm not sure who the hell has 559 hit though, but... Um, so yeah, there's that. Now, once you reach Ludi, or Lutu, I swear I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's just try teleport. You want to go to the top right corner? Right, okay. We're just gonna backtrack a little bit. As you know, this is... You have the regular toy factory up here. This is not where we're going. Uh, we recently got this added to the server. Uh, here on Euro. So, you go up here in between these two trees. You just walk up. And you walk north. Now there's gonna be a bunch of NPCs here, right? There's a grandpa, and there's some dude with a cape, and there's Catherine, and... Billy the Gold... With Billy the Golden Hands, apparently. Now they can enchant, like... Um, in the instance, before I enter, I just want to talk a little bit about loot. 
Um, this instance is actually quite rewarding in terms of what it can drop. You can get tons and tons of magic card albums or old card albums. And by tons, I mean like up to... I've personally seen three magic card albums in one run. One from Kimmy and two from the loot boxes afterwards. Um, and there's also regular card albums. There's tons of gear that you can get in here. Um, to name a few, you can get Celine's Ribbon, Noble Cross, Evil Spirit Glove. Um, by upgrading various other items that you can collect in here. Or some outside. There's also old parasol, which I know some people really enjoy. Um, I would say that this place is great if you're making an auto casting shadow chaser, for example, because there's a lot of really useful items. Uh, you can also enchant all of these items. The instance drops bloody coins, which you talk to these. Yeah, exactly, enchant here. Yeah? So, and there's this guy. He can create these items if you have the requirements. Like, if you can meet the requirements. For example, for an Irid Spirit... E evil Spirit Glove, you need a Hurt Mind, Kind Heart, and a Red Lantern. They're all dropped in this instance, so it's okay. Plus a thousand bloody coins. Might sound like a lot, but you get like 50 coins a run, so... Getting the other items will be harder than getting the coins, I promise you. Um, anyway, so let's just dive right in here. So that was a little bit about loot and all that. I would recommend bringing tokens of Secret if you have any. In case you should meet your demise. So let's just queue up. You talk to Catherine here. Catherine Jet Johnson. Uh, let's see. What? Right. Unlock Horror Toy Factory. Let me get the thingy. Now you have one hour to complete this instance as always. Now keep in mind, right? If you're solo, Kimmy has 20 million health. If you're in a party, Kimmy have all the way up to 66 million health, depending on members inside, if party of 12. So granted, I would say she gains like 4.4 million health per other person in the instance or something like that, or 4.5 million. Um, anyways, right, so uh, the story in Horror Toy Factor is actually quite sad. It's about this doll called Celine Kimmy, and she's a schizophrenic something. I mean, it's hard for me to decipher because the translations on the server are not the best. Um, but it seems like she thinks she killed her own dad, and now she's like schizophrenic, and or by dad I mean creator basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting to the last boss is not difficult, and. It's a pretty fast instance. I know some people who finish this in less than like 10 minutes or less than 12 maybe. Okay, so when you do, what you do is you enter, right? Click here. Now there are a few key points that you really don't want to mess up. So, this is the horror toy factory. You see there's some ghosts and everything is red. So don't just walk away here, talk to Catherine. Now, if you want to listen to a story, you can do that. I will not because I already know this. So let's start quickly. Don't move after you've clicked this though. Because she's going to do some RPing here, right? Now, the key elements I was speaking about earlier. You see these boxes here? Employees uniform box. We need to click that. And then we turn into a cookie. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this is part of the RP event. So, this is the first phase, right? There's going to be some regular mobs here. So, let's just do slash NC. Now, you need to kill... A certain amount of these mobs to be able to go to the next part. I'm not sure exactly how many. I think you just you have to kill the majority. Now it's whoops. They're not very difficult. Unfortunately, we do not have the cards for these mobs here. And their aggroing is a little bit strange. Like they, I'm not sure if they're glitched, because they just, sometimes they will follow you till the ends of the earth, and sometimes they will just leave you to your own devices, I have no idea. Now, what you want to do is you want to hit one of each, because they are assisting, so if one of them hits you, see, not, god, I keep getting confused. Royal jellies is a good thing to have here as well, because they confuse you, or is it called chaos, no, it's not called chaos, it's called, um, Hallucination. The thing where your monitor gets flipped upside down. 
It's a pretty funny effect, but quite annoying. So, let's just get these here. Now, the layout is the same as the old, like the regular Toy Factory, so if you remember what that map looks like. Like the level 2, the one with Stormy Knight. Don't worry, there's no Stormy Knight here though, obviously. Imagine like a red Stormy Knight on steroids. So, Enchant Deadly Poison. So when you've killed enough, there's gonna be a message up here. Also, when the cookie spins, it looks hilarious. Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Right, okay, enough screwing around. Um, so we just keep killing. I wouldn't gather too many at a time. Unless you know you can handle it. But if it's your first time, I would just go a little bit slower. You have plenty of time. The instance is very short. So we just keep killing here until the message appears. Like, lifesteal is your friend, though. Now, obviously, I have done this on a genetic, and I've done this on my GX. So, but I do know people do it with Dragon Breath Runite. So, it's obviously doable. Now, this person has great gear, for sure, but... Jeez! You're really getting those uh, thingies off today. There we go, see? Coordination announcer... Something. Here, where's everyone? How dare you workers to be absent their line and muck around. Right, it's supposed to be, well, proper English. Anyway, what you want to do is, so you go to the top left of the first face. See this little staircase and there's a employee's uniform box. You click the uniform box if you need to. Also, if you need a new uniform, if you take too long, because they only last for three minutes. Then you can go to the corners, like the top left or the one where you came from. So you get a new costume and you walk up the stairs here. La 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 la. Walk to the right. Now you have to be in costume the entire time, okay? Because otherwise they won't talk to you and they will attack you. So you talk to this green cookie here. And you will spawn a box. And you talk to the box again. And now we're also a box. Now you can backslide as a box, it looks hilarious. Like boing 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 boing. Uh, you enter the portal. And then you go to the opposite side of where you came from. Now I'm backsliding because, well, a backsliding package just looks absolutely hysterical. Now, if you're a GX, I would recommend stealthing as soon as you enter this room. Then talk to Catherine. Again, I know what to do. So this is phase two, basically. Now wait for a few seconds. You can see, I have, I'm a package. There's tons of mobs here, I'm just showing what happens if you're not stealth. So, let's just kill these very quickly. Now, these drop some random stuff. EXP isn't that great. Anyway, so what you do is you want to talk to this uniform box again. And now you turn into another cookie. So... <laughs> now, the goal here... You have to find, like, tons of these green workers, okay? Now, if you're stealth, none of the mobs will attack you. And if you're not wearing your costume when talking to a worker, they will disappear and they will spawn a ton of guards. Anyway, so just go... And then you're gonna be... Like, you can't move for two seconds or so. While they give you a bit of a story. And then they disappear. And now there are nine more we need to do this with. So you walk south. Now, you can do this in any pattern you like. This is just the way that I've basically... My own, well, not pattern that I've developed, but basically the way I do it. Uh, there might be better ways, I'm not sure. Or more effective ways, but... Um. So you basically locate all of these 10 workers. They're scattered throughout the room. They always spawn in the same places. So once you learn where they are, you don't really need to... You know, you don't have to try and find them every time. Like, the story, like I said, is sad because the doll maker actually was killed. Well, wasn't killed by Kimmy, but she believes that due to the voices in her head. And so she just goes quickly. Well. I'm sorry, I know I'm spinning my camera a lot. It's just the way I play the game. Um, it's an old habit, really. I mean, as you can see, it's a pretty easy pattern to remember. And if by some miracle you were to get lost in here, this room is like a square. 
I mean, just walk around until you find it. I mean, you'll, when you've done it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. So once you've spoken to all of them, it's going to be a bit of an RP event, sort of. Until say here, every worker shipping. Mm -hmm. So we go back to where we came from. Now, as you remember, we went straight across to enter this room, right? So if we go back. So this is the worker room. And to our left here is the first phase. So if we walk up now instead, right? Now walking to like towards the, the last phase. Now here's going to be a dialogue between Antonio and Santa. With really terrible English. So you have to watch this basically, well you don't have to, but you have to wait until it finishes. Basically Antonio's been stealing stuff and we have to catch him. And I'm, I'm not sure what he has in his sack or who he actually has in his sack. It's uh, a little bit disturbing in a way, but um, now this is where I would slap on the Sephir armor. If I can find it. Um, there we go. And the temporal strength boots with speed of light. Now speed of light does drain SP but honestly it's worth it to survive. Oh this English makes me sad. <laughs> right okay so he disappears. That unjust dude with any business ethic. <laughs> Would you go and kick that Antonio out? He might. Okay. Right, okay, so Antonio can only take one damage per hit, and you can actually search for him while stealth. Now, as you can see, there are some new mobs here. Look, Gibbet with Santa dolls, and... Now, they, they can't see you in stealth. Now, here's Antonio. Now, what's gonna happen here is, as soon as I attack him, everything here is going to attack me. And the mobs respawn, as far as I understand it, so... So, let's just... And if you hit him, he will run away. So you kind of want to try and corner him in some way. So we have Antonio's health here. When you kill Antonio, everything else despawns. He dropped a strawberry flavored rice ball. I think that's a pretty decent buff food, isn't it? Uh, let's see, plus eight luck. Yeah, it's a buff food, nice. Now they also drop like rune stones and other nonsense. So that's this phase. So once you caught Antonio and killed him, or kicked him out or whatever, you walk back. To where you saw Santa and Antonio, and then you walk straight across, and this is the end of the instance. Now, this is where we face Celine Kimmy. So, what I'm gonna do is, I will be putting on my King Tiger Doll hat, I will be putting on my Liberation Qatar, and I'll switch to Deadly again. Very important if you want to live. So, here's Kimmy. There's an RP event here. Now, Kimi has a couple of uh, different abilities. She can drain your SP, which she literally puts you down to zero SP. So you're gonna have to bring some royal jellies or some, uh, what's it called? Egg berries or whatever, right? Now, she also does reflect damage, but it's very easy to spot because she turns yellow, like, like an aura sort of thing, right? So we're gonna do enchant deadly poison. Now there's gonna be two of Kimi. Kimi plus her, um, Shadow or clone or whatever the hell it is. These two has to be DPS down simultaneously. So you can't just go full nuke on one. So you basically need some form of AoE. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stand here as a GX. Now Venom Impression will have to be put on both mobs. So we have Deadly, we have Deviant, and even with Deviant, here we go, see? There's two of them. Now the trick here is, see if we can separate them. There we go, okay. So we're gonna put Venom Impression on both, and then we're gonna start spinning her, right? Now, to hit her, like I said, it's difficult. I mean, I'm missing still, but... So basically, right, we're gonna keep spinning here. Um, an easy way to see when she's about to do the Reflect as well, she does it just after she drains all of your SP basically and she turns super yellow you can't miss it but in case you do it hurts it hurts a lot like the amount of times i've died here is 
beyond count because I wasn't paying attention. Whether I was just meh or whatever it was. So make sure you refresh Venom Impression and to have it up on both. <laughs> and keep your Enchant Deadly Poison up. Now they cast spells as well. But like I said, the reason I'm using um, Speed of Light, now you know, like I said, it drains SP, but it helps tremendously. And I know you're thinking like, oh, but you have Deviling. Yeah, but Deviling isn't enough. You, you'll see later, like she goes into Enrage mode and it hurts. It hurts a lot, even with Deviling. Now, ideally you want to stand against a wall so she can't push you back. But sometimes it's difficult to um, try to separate them while standing against the wall. So you're just going to have to tinker with that a little bit. So, outside of that it's a pretty much a tank and spank sort of thing going on here. Just make sure you have some AoE so you can kill them both at the same time. Because every time you kill the phantom, sorry it's not it's a phantom. It will resurrect, by Kimi will resurrect it and they will both gain health. Okay, they, she drained my SP now. I think. No. That was just me going... Oh. <laughs> my apologies. Um, so you basically... We keep doing the Venom Impression thing. She will get this SP icon over her head. Or heads. When she's... Um, draining all of your SP. So weapon blocking helps tremendously as well. Because blocking one hit can be... Tons of damage. Again, this is if you're a GX. Other classes might have other ways to defend themselves. So, like I said, you know, we just keep spinning here. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work keeping all of these things up. <laughs> there we go. See, so accidentally, like her phantom, and then they recovered. So that's why you kind of need to, you, you need to kill them together, basically. I'm out of SP again. I think that's mainly due to the speed of light and front, I would imagine. We'll see when she drains my SP. Mm hmm. But yeah, hit rating is essential to be able to pull this off as well. Okay, you see the cast bar here? She's about to drain all my SP. And they drain half each. There we go. See, now I'm out of SP. And she's turning yellow. Do not, under any circumstances, attack her when she's yellow. Unless you have some sort of death wish. As you can see with Deviling, she just hit me for 6.5k. She's not even enraged yet. So, yeah. Um, there's pain. Now, some might be asking why aren't you using Hallucination Walk? I'm saving that for when she enrages because, well, I just I don't want to die. Or prefer not to. So, her health bar might look low now, but it's actually not because she doesn't start at full health. Full health is 66 million, so she starts like down here, so... She still has tons and tons of health left. Okay, she's about to cast it again. There we go. SP, SP. So, it's also beneficial if they're doing that at the same time, because if they're not, then you're basically gonna have your SP drain twice. See, 6k, 5k. <gasps> and I just did what I told you not do. As you saw, I just insta-killed myself. So, um, this is definitely staying in the video. <laughs> I'm not gonna edit this out. Uh, but yeah, that's a... Don't do that thing. Let's just learn from my 4 million mistakes, shall we? So, we're back to DPSing her down. And she's enraged now. As you can see, she has the... So, I'm gonna use Hallow Walk. And she also puts up a healing debuff. Critical Wound. Which is quite nasty. See, that's what happens when you don't pay attention. I just I took my eyes off the thingy for one second because I was looking at something else and... Okay, so she drained my SP again. Now this is the thing, right? They didn't drain my SP at the same time. 
So I just basically wait until um, both have done it. Make sure you put up weapon blocking again after each time because as you can see they're not both yellow at the same time now. There we go. Now you will have to use Mastellas or healing consumables in some way. And this is exactly why uh, I have speed of light boots because when they proc they save me so much Mastellas. Now I would not recommend dark clawing and she's dead. Because if you dark claw you take three to four hundred percent more damage or whatever it is. Uh, let me see exactly. You take... Oh, sorry, it's so only 150% extra. Okay. Well, only. So, when you've killed her, she'll drop some loot. Now we got lucky. She dropped a magic card album and she dropped a closed mine box. I was actually informed that this box can drop bloody branch. I did not know this myself. I've opened tons of them, never gotten one. Now, this is not the end of the instance, okay? Now, it's the end of killing. So, let's just do greed here, yeah? Once you've killed Kimmy, do not butterfly wing. I did this in the beginning because I didn't know. So she tells me to come to the south emergency exit here. Now when you do, you have loot that awaits you. Look at all these. Now these ones can drop gear, like all the gear pieces for example that can drop in here, drops here. Uh, bloody coins from each chest, old card albums, magic card albums, purple boxes, gift boxes. So what you do is you right click, packaged present. Let's see if we're lucky. We got one album that's an old card album. Um, and magic card album. Okay, so we didn't really we didn't get any gear pieces, but we got two magic card albums, which is pretty nice. There's some EXP to be had in here as well. Uh, gold bullions, no gear though. Bloody coins. So one run yielded us two magic card albums and one old card album and a closed mine box. Let's just open this. And he gave us hot tea. Hot tea is actually not bad. So yeah, um, that's the horror toy factory guy, guys. Um, with the a GX, of course. Now she will thank you for everything and all that. Music-wise, uh, they didn't really put in such nice music here. I mean, there's some stuff, but it's just kind of a. I really hope you guys can't hear the workers outside. So yeah, um, that's it from us for today, I guess, or for this time anyway. Um, I hope this guide helps you, and um, thanks for watching, really. So you can hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. We have so many different channels, links are posted below in the description. So again guys, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.